guys, my name's Shane with Shane's Hardwood. Um, I want to welcome you to the uh, Vectrix user group meeting. And uh, today I'm going to take you through a little presentation on how I do my multicolor, multi-layer epoxy logo inlays, uh, similar to this one here. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. This is one that will be shipping out to Canada tomorrow. Um, this all actually started... Uh, quite by accident and uh, I was just going to make some end grain cutting boards and that was it about four years ago uh, when I tore a rotator cuff and wouldn't be able to work hockey. See I work for a construction company and then uh, also on weekends and then a couple times a year I'll fly overseas to wherever a major event is and, and referee hockey. Well four years ago I tore my rotator cuff and the surgeon let me know I'd have nine to twelve months off the ice so I figured I'd better come up with something to do on the weekends once I got a little more mobile just to kill time so my wife wouldn't kill me uh, for, for being in the house all the time on the weekends. Uh, so I thought, you know, I'll make some end grain cutting boards and, and sell those. And I was talking to a friend. He mentioned I could sell them on Etsy. I'd never heard of Etsy, so uh, I didn't know what it was. Um, but uh, he created an Etsy shop for me. And then um, we started. I started making some cutting boards and putting them on there. And, and not much was selling. And... Um, Oh, this is the best part about the whole story is how this whole thing started by accident here. So I get this great idea that, uh, oh, you know what? I, I just finished a table for my wife. It was a live edge redwood uh, slab, about four inches thick with a root system for a base, uh, one of a kind. And I had turned down $8,000 for that when I finished it because it just, you know, I had built it for my wife and there's just no way I was selling it. So I get this great idea that uh, I tell my friend, hey, uh, the Etsy site you made me, you know, some mom and pop thing. I, I've never heard of Etsy. So, I mean, I, I don't think anyone's spending any real money on there. Let's just post the table so people will see it and then say, oh, shit, if you can make that, this cutting boards must be really nice. So um, I have him post the table, tell him just put it for 5,000. People don't think I'm crazy, but that way it wouldn't sell. And then uh, the next day, that was on a Friday, on a Saturday morning, I, I, I noticed I had a notification from Etsy that I had a sale. So really excited. I, I, I yell upstairs. Hey, honey, you know, we sold a cutting board. I'm going to check it out. And I didn't tell my wife I listed her table for sale because I had no intention of selling it. So I go to the Etsy store and all my cutting boards are there. But there's $5,000 in my account and the table's uh, showing it sold. <laughs> so I go into panic mode, you know, like, what am I going to do? Like, my wife's going to kill me. But, uh, you know, if I get a negative sale on Etsy, these next 10 months are going to be pointless. Well, emailing back and forth with the customer just kind of get a feel for if she kind of let me out of it or not. Not not directly asking, but just kind of get a feel for this person. She mentions uh, that she is an adult film actress. So uh, being a, a stupid man, I, of course, looked at her Etsy name and Googled her name with the word porn after it. And a video pops up and I'm like, well, I can't believe this lady you know, bought my coffee table. That's just crazy. Then I feel this presence over my shoulder. Now, like I said, I did not tell my wife I listed this table. <laughs> so... Um, I, I look over my shoulder and it's her and she's got this disgusted look on her face. It's like, really? Like, what? And I, I thought, no, 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 this lady just bought our coffee table, you know, while the video's going of her working. And uh, then, then, of course, it was just, a, you know, to her, it was just the worst excuse anybody's ever had for getting caught watching porn. I, I, you know, she just couldn't. Uh, why would you just make up all this stuff? So once I explained to her and showed her that, no, look, I really sold your table on Etsy innocently by mistake. The lady just happens to be in the adult film industry. Um, and we got to sell it because otherwise we're going to get a negative review. Then she was only mad that I sold her table. And she was no longer mad about uh, the porn thing. So that, that was good. So um, I'll try to shorten this story up for you. But, uh, you know, well, and the other thing is I've never had so many people volunteer to help me move a piece of furniture in my life. Like I've moved a lot of times and I had just a line of people down the street. Hey, I'll help you move that table. So anyway, we deliver the table and she posts something. And um, I had started an Instagram account called Shane's Hardwood just for my hockey buddies. So they'd have to say the name as a joke. It was never going to be any company or never supposed to be any company. Um, and <laughs> so uh, almost overnight after she posted something, my account, we went from 70 followers to a couple thousand and people asking for all kinds of requests and things. And I started thinking like, oh, okay, maybe I can make this. Maybe I can make that. I'd always done woodworking, but only for myself. So uh, it's never anything I advertised or really sold. So I thought, okay, you know, I'll, I'll get a different table saw and all this stuff. At the time, I just had the uh, the tailgate 
uh, DeWalt one and a little uh, Porter cable uh, benchtop jointer. That was it. And oh, and, and then the DeWalt planer. That's the only three items I had. Um, never a CNC. I had never seen a CNC machine in real life before. Never worked with epoxy. So I start out making these cutting boards and then I go to doing some wood inlays and then um, started doing one color epoxy inlays and then figured like, hey, if I just let that epoxy harden, I can kind of cut back into it and do a second color without that wood border that you see so many people, they have to have that in their um, in, in, in their uh, piece. It just drives me crazy. I, I, I wanted epoxy touching epoxy with nothing in between it except just, just those two colors meeting or three or four or 10 or 20 colors meeting. I want the whole thing to be that way. So I had figured out a way to overlap vectors and stuff like that and had come up with this uh, system on how to how to do those. And it's just kind of, you know, uh, taken off. So I'm going to walk you through the process on that and uh, take you through the software. Now, just so you know, the software, that's another thing. I'm new to, uh, four years new to all of this stuff. And everything I've uh, been able to figure out has just been, you know, uh, YouTube searches, internet searches, watching videos, or uh, also, you know, communicating with people I've met through this and asking them questions and things like that. But, you know, I maybe know what seven, eight, nine of the buttons on the the, the V-Carve and the Aspire do. Uh, outside of that, I mean, this software can do way more than I'm capable of because uh, I just don't understand it. So just kind of bear with me and just understand that uh, I figured out how to do, you know, the world's greatest epoxy inlays but that's all I can do on this software. So I'm not gonna know what the buttons are really called. I'm not gonna really know how to um, uh, manipulate everything the right way. And I'm sure some of you with some experience, almost any experience will be sitting there thinking like, these guys, the guys don't even know how to say it. You know what I mean? So I get it. You can you know tease me, shoot me an email, laugh at me. I get it all the time from other woodworkers uh, uh, in the industry that, uh, you know, also can't believe that I've turned this thing into something that's, you know, gone. I'm now after the adult film actors, I've been, uh, been out to the Howard Stern show to deliver a big order and then got a studio tour and, uh, uh, George Brett baseball player, you know, gets all his boards for me, a Senator, the CEO of Traeger. I mean, it's just, it's just gone completely crazy. So you'll be able to kind of tell in my presentation that, uh, I don't really know a lot of specifics about what I'm doing, but uh, I do know how to do epoxy inlays. Thanks so much, guys. So let's get right into how I do my um, epoxy inlays, the multicolor. We're gonna work with two colors. We're gonna use the Vectrix uh, logo. And there's a couple ways you can do logos for people. They either have the good graphic files, or you can sometimes just pull a logo off the internet and do a bitmap trace. I'll show you both ways here. We won't spend a lot of time on the bitmap trace. One, because uh, like I explained to you in my intro, I don't know what a lot of these buttons even do. Um, I know this one here for the bitmap trace, a little bird, uh, and we'll, we'll go through that. But uh, I'm not going to pretend like I understand this uh, software better than uh, probably a lot of you guys uh, listening to this uh, and, and waste your time. So I'm just going to show you the process I use. And uh, here we go. So I went on the Internet and uh, pulled a picture of the Vectrix logo. And then I also asked uh, Becky at Vectrix to email me their graphic files, and she did. So I'll run you through both uh, uh, ways here. So file import, <clears throat> the bitmap that I pulled from the internet. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, drop that in. And then, let me make sure that we got the, uh, okay, good. All right, so we've got the layer uh, right here with the, uh, the picture from the internet. And what we'll do is we'll select it. We'll go to the little bird, which is the trace bitmap button. Click it. And since this is a black and white vector, we're just going to go ahead and hit uh, preview and apply. Uh, so I put the vectors over the, uh, what it saw is black. Now you can, you can manipulate these uh, here, but I do not want to try to pretend like I under even understand how to do that. I don't. So I, I, I know it's crazy. How's your work? You know, the way it is, and you don't understand this. I don't know. A gift from God. Let's just go with that. Okay. So we'll close this and let's just focus on zooming in, uh, these vectors. Let me get rid of the, um, the photo. So let's just look at the A and the T in passionate. 
So you can see here, this is rounded. This is rounded. They shouldn't be. Um, this is cockeyed. Yeah, these are just a mess. Like this is not something I would ever uh, use and make. This might work if you're not worried about your sign uh, being correct, you know, or, or 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 being true to the actual vector. You could totally make something out of this, but we are not using this since we've got good graphic files. What I would do is I'd send that picture to an artist, have them send me back vectors, and then we'd go from there. Yes, I realize that if I could just learn this stuff, I could save a lot of money paying artists, but that's not what I'm dealing with. So. Let's start with uh, now pulling in good vector files that I got from Becky over at Vectrix. So import vectors, the files there. I'll go ahead and open it. All right, logo. So I'm gonna shrink this, oh, I didn't even need to do that. Okay, I'm gonna shrink this down just a tad. We're gonna use this aligning tool here to center it. And it needs to shrink just a bit more because I'm going to have a half inch border around this project. That's the reason I showed you in the intro a picture, you know, because this project's already done. Um, but I showed you a picture of it so you could kind of see ahead to what I'm talking about here if this is not making sense. Okay. That is done. So now what we need to do is create that border. And what we're gonna do is since this is 15 and a quarter by nine and a half, I will just create a rectangle at 14 and a quarter by eight and a half. And when I do that, that will leave us a half inch on each side since I basically shortened it by an inch. We'll use that same aligning tool and bring that in. And now you can see if we cut this first, this pocket, uh, We'll be able to fill that void with one color epoxy. And then we come back into the cured epoxy and cut this logo and pour that with whatever color we need to do there. And that is pretty much the gist of it. So let me show you how I'd set this up. My first tool path uh, or paths would be, I always use uh, V-carve. So you could just do this with, um, with an end mill and have rounded corners, but um, uh, that's just not how I do that. So let me just show you what I do here. I would set this up as a V-carve. We're gonna go with a 30 degree bit since that's what I've actually cut this with, doing this part after the fact. I'll never tell you guys that though because that would remove the fourth wall. Just kidding. All right, there we go. Okay, so we've got it set up with a 30 and a, and a quarter inch end mill. And we'll go just 0.15 for this. And we're going to call this uh, my my filing system I use for uh, tools is just basically the the order that I'm going to run them in, uh, the name of the company, a couple letters there, because you only get six digits to be able to see it on the handheld controller I have for my Laguna. Um, and then uh, a couple digits to let me know which bit I'm supposed to run. So Thirty. So this lets me know my second path for the Vectrix file is a 30 degree uh, V-bit. When I calculate it, it automatically made that first path with the quarter inch end mill, so I'm going to need to rename this. Okay, I put 14 because it's a quarter inch end mill. They won't use dashes and, and, and slashes and things like that in this, so that is where we're at. So when I... Um, I'm going to also... Ah, you know what, I'll save that for sheet two that I already have set up, so we won't worry about uh, doing that. Okay, so let's preview this uh, tool path. So you can see this thing's gonna cut out, leave us a nice void to be able to pour our first le level of epoxy in. And then um, for our second run, we're basically gonna cut everything in it. For this, I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, 15 degree bit, get a little bit more detail. Um, I got my pass depth set uh, to 0.15 max on this. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and for the second cut, I'm going to cut them only 0.14 deep. We'll leave a little bit of epoxy um, on the wood so we don't have to fight as many bubbles. And then the 1 8 inch end mill. Pass depth is fine. Do it all in one move. All right, 0.14, a 15, and a 1 8. And this will be 
15 degree bit and this will be the third path with the uh, one eighth inch end mill. And this can get confusing. That's why I leave clear on here, even though this has a little picture of an end mill. I leave clear on there just to remind me that that's an end mill uh, because I also have a, a an 18 degree V bit. So that could get uh, kind of messed up. Okay, so uh, reset preview. And let me show you what this would do cutting into the epoxy. So you can see that would cut right into the epoxy. You go ahead and just pour um, whatever color it is you want. And in this case, it's gonna be black and uh, let that harden and then flatten and I'll show you that process as well later uh, in a video coming up. Okay, so that is it for that. Now when I go to this other sheet that I prepared, because if I wanted to show the customer this, let me show you what would happen if I run all the uh, preview of them all. So let me go to the 3D. Let me reset that and do that one more time for you so we can actually see it preview so it cut it in but the problem is this third and fourth tool path got cut a hundredth of an inch uh more shallow than the initial pass so we're not seeing it here so what i did is uh before i did this video i set up sheet two to have uh the stuff in here and all i did so i could show the customer is uh put colors on these tool paths so when i preview this visible tool path you know there's still a void there that would need to get poured, but we're just using our imagination so they can see the colors. And then all I did with these, since I'm not really gonna uh, cut this, I just set them 0.2 deep instead of, uh, you know, 0.15 or 0.16. I just made sure it's, you know, further along than, uh, I'm sorry, deeper than the first cut. And when I preview this path or preview all, then we can kind of see this is how the sign will look. So now we're all done with the software. So we're out here at the machine and we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'll get this thing going and I'll do some time-lapse videos now from the process of the first cut, uh, the pour, back here to the machine, the second cut and the pour. And then I'll, uh, I'll put some music behind that and then I'll join you after uh, we watch those.
want to thank everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video presentation I put together for uh, how, to, how I do my multicolor, multi-layer epoxy logo inlays. Um, I also put together a little presentation I'm going to show you now of some of the most difficult and most fun projects that I've done over the last uh, three and a half years or so. Um, if anybody has any questions about doing uh, things like this, I love uh, talking with other people in the community and helping them with anything I can help with as much as I can help. So please reach out to me. The best way to get a hold of me will be on my Instagram. That's Chains Hardwood LLC. And uh, just shoot me a message there and I'll be able to get to that as soon as possible and then get you some info back, okay? Enjoy the video presentation, guys. And have a great night.